And good afternoon. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Marshall Zellinger. Welcome to Politics Unplugged. Your chance to get more in-depth answers from Colorado's policymakers about the topics that impact you the most. Today, how to get the majority of millennials to vote and what motivates those born between 1980 and the mid-2000s. And we'll take a closer look at some of the budget challenges facing Colorado. Now, some of the biggest budget problems involve school funding. And Denver Public Schools says it will have to make about $20 million in cuts next year, even as enrollment is increasing. And while a lot of those cuts will be in central office positions, about 100 educators within the district will be out of jobs next year. So joining us today to discuss the challenges facing schools is Mark Ferrandino. He is the chief financial officer for DPS, also a former state lawmaker and speaker of the House. And so now you've seen these issues from both sides here. First of all, how does that, how does that fit for you? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's eye-opening sometimes yeah. when you go from making the policy, say in the state capital, to then actually going to implement um, that. And it's always some of the other CFOs in school districts remind me of some of the things I might have said when I was the speaker yes. that now I have to deal with as a as a CFO. And uh, sometimes it's difficult and it's eye-opening. I, I think one of the first things we want to talk about is H House Bill 1253 on its way to the governor's office right now that uh, uh, reduces the negative factor. By yeah. twenty-four million dollars that was just passed. So, how does how does that affect financing? Uh, it's a, actually a help, right. um, but nowhere near where we it's need not a to lot be. Of money, no, right? it's it's about eighteen dollars on average per student. So mm -hmm. not a huge uh, huge increase. Um, we had a plan that that was going to come to the districts. However, because lower enrollment than what was projected and lower inflation, the state could have taken that money away, but they decided to give it still to the schools. So we saw our per pupil go up. But that is still, we're nowhere near where we should be in terms of Amendment 23 and what the impacts of the Great Recession have been. Denver alone, we are annually $92 million below our Amendment 23 funding requirement. And, and I hear a lot of uh, school officials talk about low enrollment, yet we hear on the other side, the flip side of the economy in Colorado and how many people are moving here. Yeah. How, do you, how do you explain that to people who are sitting at home going, why? Why is there a shortage? Sure, there's two things in Denver. For example, um, we saw about two years ago about four to five percent increase in enrollment in Denver. We're still projected next year to see an increase about one to one and a half percent. So we're still increasing. But think five years ago, and five years ago was the start of the Great Recession. And nationally, birth rates dropped all over the country because of the Great Recession. And now those those lower birth rates are now impacting those kindergarten classes and will move through the K-12 system. So when more people are moving to Denver uh, and Colorado overall, we saw lower birth rates than what we had before, and that means a slower growth. We're still going to see growth, but slower growth. Okay, so what's the now. fix for Denver? You know, I think the state needs to deal with the impacts of the negative factor, and that means, well, we're giving Tabor rebates out to voters. So this year we're giving, you know, I think it's a 100 to $200 million, about 20 to $40 per individual, we have a negative factor that's $830 million that needs to go into our classroom. So we need to have a broad conversation about what are the implications of Tabor and what it's doing with this revenue cap when we still have so many needs that we haven't recovered from the Great Recession. And, and then that hospital provider fee, and that was... That was your, your baby. Yeah, it was my legislation. We uh, passed the hospital provider fee. Uh, at the time, we should have made it an enterprise, and the governor is now trying to get the legislature to make it an enterprise. We always thought it could be done that way, but because of compromises and conversations to get the legislation through, it did not happen, and we thought we'd come back. Um, but we were also not in a place where the economy was doing as well as it is now. So we didn't think we'd be hitting the taper limits. So what did you learn from that? I mean, would, would you have done things differently? Hindsight's 2020. I would have made it an enterprise. I would have pushed harder to make it an enterprise at the time when we passed the legislation. All right, let's, um, let's talk about um, the voters, people sitting at home saying, I'm not inclined to give schools more money. What's your, what's your best argument for... Um, helping out our school districts? Well, I, I mean, generally education, it is the most important thing we do. Um, it's the great equalizer, the great opportunity. If we can give a kid an education, it has a huge impact on society and making sure kids graduate. And when you look at Denver Public Schools and what we've been able to do, we've seen huge increases, uh, increases in graduation rates. Uh, over the last five to ten years, we've seen thousand more kids graduating on time from DPS. We've seen the dropout rate drop from 11 percent to just over 4 percent. Um, really good trajectory, but it's getting challenged as we are getting less and less funding. We get less funding this year than we did six years ago from the state, and that's not even inflation adjusted. 
And so with those constraints in terms of our funding, it is hard to keep that progress we're making going. So knowing where things are right now in 30 seconds, what's your number one item to do this year? You know, I would love to see the legislature change the hospital provider fee to an enterprise. And if not that, then I'd love to see the voters make some changes to Tabor so that we can keep the money above that revenue cap and invest it in education and other important priorities. All right, Mark Ferrandino, thank you very much. And